Hello my friends and channel subscribers, Greg here from Brisbane, Australia with another uncut, unedited, no bull video. Today I would like to combine my two previous reviews of Philips uh, pressure cooker and Baccarat uh, knives and show how to make very tasty dish in almost instant with the right tools. So when you use right tools for right job, it's almost like no cooking at all. It's actually a pleasure to be in the kitchen and create such a tasty dish in no time. And you will see complexity because so many ingredients go into making that dish. Yet, it's simple because if you follow instructions, you cannot make it wrong. So what dish is? It's mostly, I guess, English dish, but I use it as a part of my I would call carnivore diet, but it's not carnivore because I'm using vegetables, so I don't want to make it controversial with it. But in a nutshell, if you follow nutrition, most of the vitamins and minerals actually in organ meat. So there are some organ meats that are uh, mainstream, there are some not. Uh, today I'm using two organ meats that I think mainstream and um, easy to cook. The first one is heart that I just unpacked, and the second one kidneys. So this is traditional kidney hard spicy dish and I'll be using pressure cooker to make it and I'll slice everything with baccarat knives and this is my review of those products. If you've got any questions about that or any nutritional questions, please ask down below in the comment section. If you like this video or any other videos on my channel, feel free to uh, subscribe and hit the notification bell so you won't miss any videos. Let's get cooking. And by the way, um, I'll make, uh, I'll put comments down below where I got all my stuff uh, if you would like to buy uh, knives at a decent price or pressure cooker uh, at a decent price too. Uh, I've got no affiliation with those products. I'm just delighted that I could find something on budget that works quite well. Now, uh, what I'll do, I won't follow recipe as such because um, uh, in the recipe section it says the meat needs to be... Um, I guess uh, pre-cooked to cook it there. The reason is that you need to kind of seal the meat uh, uh, to make it uh, cook better. Uh, to be honest, it's not my first time I'm cooking this and end product is great, but when you seal the meat, you create the first part which is not quite healthy. What happens to meat when it's uh, getting that uh, crust and it's called advanced, advanced glycation products, which is actually cancerogenic, not good for your health. So I won't do this, but uh, pressure cooking is good enough. Let's start with unpacking <coughs> hearts and I'll just use the smallest baccarat knife, cut it open and what I'll do, I will use bigger knife to cut the meat. Uh, which knife? I guess that's the good knife to cut the meat. What I'll do, uh, think of pieces that you would like to eat at the end and those manageable pieces should be cut too. So I guess I will... And, and look, how easy it is to cut. The knife just slices through the meat. There's no effort involved. Um, if your knife is getting blunt, I would suggest professional sharpening or you can buy a sharpener down below in the link description. It costs like $39. And it's one of the good investments. I'll sharpen my knives once a month and it's good enough to sustain for a whole month of operation. I guess that piece would go like that and then we cut in the smaller pieces here. So as I cut smaller pieces I will chuck it straight into the uh, pressure cooker. By the way I'm not using any oils because the meat is already a little bit fatty. It should create uh, enough fat and also at the end um, we will have to cover it with a little bit more water so there's enough of environment that it won't burn and will cook properly uh, but it, it's up to you some people that pre-cook meat uh, I suggest to pre-cook it in, uh, in oils make sure that you use healthy oils none of those uh, vegetable trans fat oils um, that are full of omega 6s that are not good for your health despite of uh, what others claim so see how when you got good tool, it's really easy to quickly cut it and um, chuck it all in. The knife, um, as I say, it's not 100% professional um, uh, chef's knife, but that's the beauty of it. 
because I'm so rough with it, I'm not afraid to break it. The better knife still is, it's becoming more brittle and it's easy to break it. So by cutting now, I'm actually flexing the knife a little bit and um, I'm not afraid of breaking it. Um, so that big piece of heart almost cut and I'll move slowly to kidneys in a second. Yeah, so heart is done. Just one little piece here. Right, heart is done. Let's open up the um, kidneys. I'm using, by the way, um, ox uh, heart and kidney. So, um, if you prefer any other animal, that's fine. Uh, I'm just um, managing to source uh, good quality grass-fed produce, so um, uh, it's easy for me to um, focus on animals that are definitely fed well. That are um, the meat is not saturated with the hormones or any grain fed um, uh, residues like omega-6 and because if animals fed grains which they're not supposed to be fed uh, their body is inflamed and um, that inflammation that stress getting past into muscle that we that we're eating and um, it's not good for your health um, so try to avoid um, non-grass fed meats if you can I understand everyone has a budget, so um, yeah, unfortunately sticking to budget is a trick as well, but if you can afford grass-fed stock, go for it. Right, one kidney is cut, one more to go. So I've got here, I think approximately how much heart? I had um, 900 grams of heart and approximately 900 grams of uh, kidneys, so overall I've got around 1.8 kilos of meat currently inside my uh, pressure cooker. Uh, so easy to cut when you've got uh, good knives. And mind you, look at the layer of fat we've got in the meat and it's quite stringy fat and um, the cheap knives wouldn't be able to go through this. So if you've got a uh, good product, it's pretty good. All right. Kidneys and hearts are in. Now, to make sure that your dish smells well, as well as it tastes well, and as well as it's very healthy, we've got garlic. I'm using for almost two kilos of meat, whole knob of garlic, so I crush it and put straight on top of the meat. Um, feel free to use minced garlic, I just believe, and uh, fresh produce um, that all minerals and vitamins are there. So it's not preserved, it's all um, you know, fresh and juicy. And, and you probably can taste it in the final product um, if you're using minced garlic or um, freshly squeezed garlic. So that's me, just. Um, but you know what, if you want to save time and money, I guess. Um, marinated or or just um, pre-chopped garlic is fine so that's me just squeeze the whole knob of garlic um, right in now with the salt um, salt is another good taste or good mineral for uh, for the dish and I guess uh, right amount of salt is quite crucial but because you're using other spices it's not as I guess um, determine how much salt you put in. For this amount of meat and um, other spices, I put one and a half tablespoon of salt. And by the way, I'm using Himalayan salt because it's not deprived of all minerals, it's all in, and it's definitely good quality of salt. So one and a half tablespoons of salt. Now, to make sure that it smells quite well and, and tastes well, I've got bay leaves. Bay leaves are definitely great addition 
for the dish I use probably um, good four bay leaves it's I know it sounds a lot but then you're, like, you're not eating them you're picking them out of the dish but the amount of taste and smell it gives to a dish is phenomenal now for health purposes I put a little bit of ginger in um, I'm not measuring it it's just chuck uh, probably a um, tablespoon or something it's in uh, another good spice to put in is a cumin um, again I'm not measuring probably good um, teaspoon in yeah good and then oregano leaves I use dried ones if you got fresh ones even better but you know what dry ones would do I use probably um, good two tablespoons of oregano now it's up to you, but I think dish like that, especially in the winter, deserves some hotness to it. So I add chili powder, and I think that creates a lot of really good taste in the dish. So I put probably um, I don't know, a teaspoon of chili powder, uh, and because I like spices so much, I put probably another tablespoon of um, chili based on capsicum. Uh, you can find other um, spices to put in, but those are two of my favorite spices. And at the end of the day, to make sure that it's healthy as well, and if you like the taste, uh, I put um, two spoons of uh, ground turmeric. with spices uh, before we turn it on as you mean oh, hold on no vegetables that's the right thing spices are good but there's a two fresh vegetables to add um, I've got um, capsicum or for American viewers um, bell pepper I choose green one green ones are good so just you know chop it in a, in a size that you um, would like to eat make sure that uh, there are no seeds and no uh, core, so it's totally de-seeded and de -cored. so see how easy to cut vegetables as well, I mean like knives should cut vegetables easy, but bad knives are just squishing them, good knives just cutting them, and uh, celery, I personally don't like celery, and I was against the recipe, but the celery disintegrates within a dish so well, and creates really lovely taste, so take it from a person that doesn't like celery, it's actually quite phenomenal and I do like uh, the way it tastes at the end. So I put um, three sticks of celery. Uh, this is quite big so it's up to you. You can put more, you can put less. But it's really easy and you see how when you get good knife, how easy to cut it. And by the way, you can see what it, the way I'm cutting it. I'm not professional at all. It just you know, go with the flow and make sure that I cut everything, there's no fancy cut in here, um, but you know, we cut the way we cut, as I say, I'm not a cook, I'm not a chef, uh, I'm just a guy on the internet that uh, sharing recipes and sharing good appliances. So um, we're cutting the celery, I'm halfway through my second stick. Done, one more stick to go, and then we can add final ingredients and turn it on. Alright. It's the final stick, or let's say half of a stick of celery. And then we move into what, what people call base or sauce. It depends how you treat it. I think um, it's a base. And the base is uh, diced tomatoes and tomato paste. Um, the final product won't have much of tomato flavor because so much spices and ingredients are already um, in there. 
but you know, as a base, it's quite nutritious and amazing how tasty it is um, at the end of the day. So I've got uh, for almost two kilos of meat, I put um, uh, how much is in the tin? 400 grams. I put 800 grams of uh, tomatoes, and I put one or maybe two tablespoons of uh, tomato paste. Let's put it two tablespoons. I like uh, richer flavors in my final dish. Yeah, I put two tablespoons. I think that should be enough. So what we've got here is um, all ingredients are in and literally, as you can see with the right equipment, it took me literally five minutes to chop everything in. And you may see um, top of the pot, um, it's I guess 75% full and there's a max mark right on top of it. Uh, what we need to do to make sure that it doesn't burn and also create enough steam uh, to cook the dish is add water. That water will cover one centimeter on top of all ingredients, right? So I suggest people use filtered water. I know we've got good water in Australia, but um, I wouldn't suggest to cook in fluoride and chlorine and you know basic um, uh, home filter should filter it uh, the filter i use it's a brita i'll put down below a link uh, if you already buy stuff just chuck in the card and it will be delivered to you but again you know think of chemicals that are coming out of top even though they comply with the drinking water standard you don't want to cook in the chemical because your ingredients will absorb chemicals so here you go what i'll do i'll just uh, add water until it covers the uh, uh, food on top here and give it a quick stir here just to make sure that uh, we're not really mixing ingredients right but we just make sure that it's all um, level and uh, dish can start cooking on its own without um, uh, bubbling in on top of the uh, uh, pressure cooker uh, valve system here so it actually sits nice and you probably can see it's a 75% full. Um, the valve is probably sticking one centimeter apart. We've got two centimeters on top. So the food would not escape in the safety mechanism. Um, so normal recipes say cook all of it for um, 40 minutes, but because it's assumed that meat is pre-cooked, um, I would add additional time because I'm starting from the beginning. So I turn pressure cooker on, uh, make it initialize, right? I'm not sure if uh, it's visible. Oh, now it should be visible on the, on the video. I cycle it. Um, so I'm going to pressure cook and cycle it to the until I, I see meat and poultry, right? And then choose timer and um, we'll probably cook it for 55 minutes. So just 55 minutes for cooking and then press start. Make sure that my valve is close to sealed. Uh, it beeps and goes into from power to heating. What it does, it uh, warms up the whole thing inside. When steam starts rising and pressurizes the cooker and the cycling dial moves to the timer when cooker is pressurized and then the timer you put in will be active the moment from moment it's pressurized so what it took me it took me approximately uh 10 minutes 15 minutes to prep my um meat and spices took me probably 20 seconds to start it all together then it will be cooking for maybe 5 to 10 minutes until it pressurizes another 55 uh, all together but i don't need to be in the kitchen it will beep and let me know it's ready and voila after all spending in the kitchen probably 20 25 minutes or one hour and a half of total time using the right tools and good ingredients you've got a fantastic family meal that you know if you feed the whole family that's a really good three to four portions here right if you only eating by yourself and you can freeze it you know i've got good two to three weeks of um Food, especially if you cycle and eat something else. 
So I hope that you find this video useful. Feel free to ask questions about knives, pressure cooker, water filter, everything I mentioned in this video. The whole idea of my video is to use the right tools, cook right food, and make sure that you guys stay healthy and strong as you possibly can. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please subscribe, hit the notification button, and there are more videos to come. Great from Brisbane, until next time. All right, now I just heard beeps and um, run to the kitchen. Please refer to my previous uh, pressure cooker uh, video. What happens when a product is cooked, uh, but you're not paying attention to it? So what it does, it goes into warm up mode. That means it, keep it keeps it hot for as long as it's plugged in. So um, it's just eight minutes overdue, which is, you know, what means nothing. That means it's cooked, it's just keeping it warm. What I'll do now, I will disconnect it from the, from the uh, electricity and see what we've got inside. But first I need to release uh, pressure, and after releasing pressure, we'll look what's inside. Let's do that. It smells so good. Let's see what's inside. Almost ready. So there's a set to mechanism until all steam is gone and cook a depressurized, you cannot open the lid. So you have to wait until all the steam comes out and when you click, click means the um, lid um, valve is released and means I can open it because now if I try to twist it, I cannot, so it's good safety for our pressure cooker. So let's hear that click. Alright, I heard it. We'll open it up. And look at this. Oh, it so smells so good. I'm not sure. If it's visible on the camera, but oh, it's looking so good. Let's see if it's how it tastes like. That's probably so hot. Ah, oh, isn't it beautiful? Look, guys, seriously, in five to ten minutes, you chop all the food, chuck it in the pressure cooker, using good knives, using good pressure cooker. Walk away and in our time you've got beautiful stew. Uh, this one is English style with all the uh, heart and kidneys. And I can tell you what, if I would serve that meal and didn't tell you there's a heart and kidneys, you would not probably guess what it is. Because it looks like a stew, it's very uh, thick, it's very rich. And with all the spices we put in, it's tasty. Anyhow, Tune in to my channel for more cooking videos, appliances videos, uh, uh, kitchen devices videos. Please comment down below if you would like to see more and what in particular you would like to see and I'll try to create video. Until next time, Greg from Brisbane, Australia.